Speaking of family, it's now my pleasure to introduce a very special personal friend of mine, sound like Sid Hartman, personal friend of mine, <laughs> who's practically family. <laughs> Peter Polga served on the Courage Kenny staff for 38 years, was instrumental in the opening of Courage Kenny St. Croix in 1988, and Peter served as the director of Courage Kenny for 25 years until his retirement in 2013. Please welcome Peter Polga. I, somebody, somebody asked if we were going to be trading, you know, these barbs throughout the morning, and I said, absolutely not. He has the mic last, so I'm not going to get into that match. But, Never pick a fight, you can't win. Okay. I, just, I do want to mention, though, a couple of things. First of all, we really do appreciate your being here uh, and, and sharing your personal story uh, with us today. But I do remember kind of meeting you a uh, long time ago, some 40, some years ago, and I remember being much taller <laughs> than you were at the time. And I believe I even had more hair than you did. But, a little bit. You now you've changed a bit, but honestly, I, I want you to be very honest. I think I'm pretty much the same. What do you think, Matt? You're, you're the same, just, just older. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Don't ask. If you don't want the answer, don't ask the question, right? Well, thanks for joining us this morning. It's my job this morning to share with you a little bit of the history of Courage uh, Kenny St. Croix. And I guess that, that does mean that I'm a little older because they usually ask older people to do that kind of thing. But I have only, I have about five minutes. And for those of you who know me, know what a challenge it is. I don't think I've ever said anything in five minutes before, so here it goes. Um, first, thanks again for joining us uh, this morning. 30 years, it's an amazing amount of time. Many of you who I look around the room, many of you have been here with us from the beginning. Others have joined us along the way. And others, this may be your first connection with Courage Kenny. Welcome. We're glad that you are all here this morning with us. Um, the building of Courage Kenny St. Croix, the additions that we've had, the remodeling that we've done, the programs that we developed could not have happened without the generous support of so many people throughout the years. And for that, we are deeply grateful. So thank you for that. To uh, get through this uh, top topic of history, it's kind of a hard thing to get my arms around especially within five minutes, but I'm gonna cover just two areas. I felt I needed to limit it. First of all, how did we get started? And then secondly, everything else that happened in 30 years. <laughs> so let's, <laughs> let's, start, let's start with how we got started. In the mid 80s, several years after some major program development and uh, building at our Golden Valley site, our board of directors and our leadership team started to think about or, or started to develop a vision of how courage should grow into the future. Do you continue to grow at one central location or do you develop, <coughs> excuse me, develop other satellite clinics or satellite sites to best meet the service needs of people in the community? And if so, how do you do that? How do you, how do you branch out? And at about the same time, Wilco Shanebaum, who was our executive director, met, had a meeting with Katherine Anderson. Mrs. Anderson and the Anderson Foundations had been very supportive of Courage Kenny over the years, and Mrs. Anderson had a particular interest in aquatics. She had a very good understanding of the benefits that aquatic services provided to the clients that we served. She encouraged Wilco during that meeting, she encouraged Wilco to try to do more to address the needs in the East Metro area. Well, you can imagine, after Wilco heard that, within a couple of months, we had an aquatics program up and running at the Oakland Junior High School that was running on Saturday mornings. And 
he was really excited about this program and wanted to share that with Mrs. Anderson. So a few months after we were up and running, he invited her to tour the program, to see the kids, and to just get a sense of what we were doing in the community. And he did. He brought her to, the, brought her to Oakland. The kids were in the pool. There were, it was a very popular program. It was Saturday mornings. The kids were in the pool having a great time, really enjoying the freedom that, you know, kind of a gravity-free environment that a, uh, an aquatics environment can provide, and just having a lot of fun. And at, at coffee afterwards, when he was talking with Mrs. Anderson, she shared with him how much she enjoyed the program and seeing the kids and what a wonderful opportunity it was for these kids in the community. But she also said, Wilco, we can do better than this in this community. And if you have any knowledge of Wilco and his vision, it didn't take him long to, uh, he got right to work. Um, so it just, not long after that, Wilco, Mrs. Anderson, Sarah Anderson, and a few other people found themselves in a bus touring the, the area looking for possible locations for an aquatics and um, rehab center in the, in the community. And the rest is, the rest, so they say, is history. Um, it, didn't take, um, it didn't take long until things really started moving. And thanks to the generous support of so many people in this community, October 13th, 1988, Courage St. Croix opened its doors. Okay, so that's kind of how we got started. Now, if I'm going to get you out of here before noon today, I want to make sure that I start talking to you about what happened after that, because that's a long story. First of all, I know we have, we're on a time limit, but we're going to start with a short timeline of what are some of the key events that happened over the years. So I want to start actually a couple of years before we open. First, uh, 1985, the aquatics program was initiated at Oakland Junior High School. 1986, contracts were developed with two school districts and a long-term care facility in the community. The contract with the Stillwater uh, School District remains to this day. In the fall of 1987, there was a groundbreaking at 1460 Curve Crest Boulevard. We had to wait that fall until the soybeans were harvested from the land that we had purchased <laughs> before we could break ground. Well, needless to say, there's been a lot of change in the area. There is, uh, there's been a bit of, bit of, bit of, bit of development. In uh, October, on October 13th, 1988, Courage St. Croix, Courage County St. Croix opened for business. My big fear at that time was will we ever fill this place up? Will people find us? Well, guess what? They did. And they continued to, uh, to find us. As Matt had mentioned, some of the statistics are, are overwhelming. In 2017, there were over, over 60,000 pool visits at, that, at the Golden Valley or at the um, St. Croix site. And that, if, when, you, when you think about that, that's more than 200 people a day just coming in to use the pool. That doesn't account for all the other programs that are happening at that site. So that's, that's amazing. So moving ahead, December 3rd, 1996, we opened a new expansion. In 1998, we initiated services at a Forest Lake clinic. In 2012, we moved our pediatric services to the Stowater School District's Early Childhood and Family Center. This is, a, I think, a, just a great example of partnerships in this community that we've, that we've valued so deeply. This is a great example of a partnership that really keeps the clients that we serve at the center of our efforts. In 19, in, excuse me, in 2015, we initiated a major remodeling to enhance client services and expand offerings. And that progress continues. Thanks for the, the last 30 years. It's been amazing. And stay tuned for the next 30. There is much more to come. 
Now it's my pleasure to introduce someone whose life changed dramatically exactly one year ago, someone who's demonstrated tremendous determination over the past several months. Please join me in welcoming Deb LaRue. Thank you, Matt. And thank you to all of you for being here this morning. My name is Deb LaRue. I'm here with my husband, Chuck, my daughter, Mariah, and my son, Sean. I never thought I'd be in a position to share my injury story. Like many of you, I led a very busy life. For my career, I'm a project manager, and I help companies improve and implement um, their business systems. I love to hike, garden, read, water ski, follow my kids to all of their activities, and spend time with family and friends. Last spring, I developed double vision, and in June, an MRI confirmed that I had four meningioma brain tumors, two of them at the base of my skull and two of them behind my left eye. While doctors did not believe they were cancerous, they told me that even though they may be benign, if they're in a bad location, they can be just as much of a problem. So what does one do with a diagnosis like that? First, I got on my knees to pray. Second, we scheduled professional family portraits. <laughs> And third, we booked a, a long overdue family vacation to Hawaii. On that day in June, when I first learned of my MRI result, we contacted a dear friend who was a physician down at the Mayo Clinic. And by the grace of God, within 30 minutes, I had scheduled appointments with a neurologist and a neurosurgeon who specialized in tumors at the base of the skull. It was absolutely amazing. And within eight days, we had a treatment plan for all four tumors. So after dropping my daughter off at the University of North Dakota um, for her sophomore year where she's studying occupational therapy, on August 14th, Chuck and I headed to Rochester for my surgery to remove the two tumors at the base of my skull. My 10-hour surgery went really well, but in the days following surgery while I was still in the hospital, my walking became difficult and my legs slowly started to experience more and more numbness. An MRI of my neck showed that I had experienced some oxygen deprivation in my spinal cord right at the back of my neck. Um, they called it a spinal cord stroke, and it affected both sides of my body, from my neck down. Up to this point in my life, I was so active and independent. Just one week before that, I could have been slalom water skiing, and there I sat in a wheelchair, dependent on everyone else to hoist me from the bed to my wheelchair, push me to the bathroom, and hoist me onto the stool. And I had to wear one of those big yellow fall risk wristbands, which was really a problem for me. <laughs> I couldn't believe this was happening to me. What helped me in those very difficult days was my faith and trust in God's plan for my life, my wonderful husband and kids, and the amazing outpouring of love and prayers from my family and friends, many who are sitting with me at table number two. <laughs> After three weeks in rehabilitation unit in Rochester, I was finally able to walk with a walker and climb stairs without somebody holding onto my gait belt. And I was able to groom myself, the recipe for discharge. <laughs> when planning for my discharge, my doctors highly recommended Courage Kenny for my outpatient rehabilitation. And the fact that the St. Croix location was less than a mile from my house made it perfect for me. My occupational and physical therapists at Courage Kenny were outstanding. Alyssa, Beth, and Jenny, would you please stand? This was my dream team. <laughs> when I arrived the first day on September 12th, they were so welcoming. At every appointment, they were encouraging with therapy plan in hand to challenge me and to meet my goals. And when I met my short-term goals, they immediately helped me set my next-term goals. They were just as determined as I was to meet my goals. By the middle of October, so just one, week, or one month after my first appointment, Beth and Jenny had me walking without any assistive devices. And Alyssa worked with me on basic householding activities, like tricks to make laundry, cooking, and cleaning easier. 
We worked on improving my fine motor skills with beating and reaction time testing to get me ready to drive. <laughs> There's my independence again. One day, a therapist that I had not even worked with stopped me in the hallway as I was coming into my appointment and commented on how she had observed a significant improvement in my walking. I had not even met her before, but her words were just made my day. After making all this progress, my next goal was to be ready for our family trip to Hawaii for Christmas. One of the many creative things that Beth and Jenny planned for me was to take me across the street to a park and practice walking on a sand volleyball court. That was awesome. They wanted me to be ready for my trip just as much as I did, and I was ready. I was able to keep up with my family during the entire trip. We watched the sunrise over Mount Haleakala. We walked the shops. We walked the beach. I swam in the ocean, and I went deep sea fishing, whale watching, and to a luau. When I returned from Hawaii, the first thing that we discussed was, what are my next goals? And I had a big one. For Christmas, Chuck gave me a surprise trip of a lifetime. It was a spiritual pilgrimage to France, Spain, and Portugal. Getting ready for a trip like that required endurance, so that is what we worked on. And I'm happy to report that I just returned from that trip on April 27th, so very recently, and I was able to keep up with the tour group for our 12-day pilgrimage. One day, I even walked over nine miles and 21,000 steps. That was a magical day in Lourdes, France. What happened to me over this past year could truly happen to anyone. I had no risk factors for any of these health issues. While this path has had many challenges, there have been many blessings, and getting to work with the therapist at Courage Kenny was certainly one of them. While I still experience fatigue in my upper body and numbness and tingliness in my hands and my legs and my feet, I am determined to work toward a full recovery. And this summer, I plan to water ski again, even if it's on two skis. <laughs> Thank you, Alyssa, Beth, and Jenny, and the entire Courage Kenny team for helping me to recover from my spinal cord injury. Thank you. Now I have the honor of inviting to the stage Mitchell and David Raji to share how Courage Kenny came into their lives. Some of you may have seen the article in the Pioneer Press this past weekend about Mitchell and the role Courage Kenny St. Croix therapies have played in his recovery. Please welcome Mitchell and David. Yeah, did you catch the articles? Front page, it's pretty cool. I got several copies if anybody needs any. I'm David. <laughs> Good morning, everybody, and thank you for being here. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to anyone in the audience. Is the group this size or somebody's going to have a birthday? Raise your hand if you did. Okay. I struck out this time, maybe. Okay. Well, happy birthday to Courage Kenny, 30 years of helping individuals create a better world. Uh, I'm here to introduce your next speaker, Mitchell Raji. Let me start with a little background on his story. Three years ago, on a Friday at 9.01, Mitchell had a head-on with a semi-tractor trailer, and our family took a new path in life. Looking back, it's amazing how just a few seconds can change your life. On behalf of our family, my thanks to the caregivers here at Courage Kenny. Thank you for helping rebuild Mitchell. Let me give you a little additional details of why he was where he was to set the stage. On May 1st, 2015, Mitchell was working in the oil fields in North Dakota, leading a crew of five insulators. Pipes transporting oil need to be covered with insulation because of the extreme cold. On that day, several members of our family were traveling to a cabin north of Orr, Minnesota. The time was roughly 5.30 p.m as we were approach, approaching our turn near Duluth, a Trinity, a Trinity Hospital 
chaplain contacted us with a bit of heart-stopping information. Mitchell is hurt. Get to Minot, North Dakota, as fast as you can. I asked for some details, and the response was the same. Get to Minot, as fast as you can. With the help of brother-in-law, Earl, and a small plane, we were flown from Cloquet to a town called Rugby, North Dakota. Apparently, Minot is an international airport, and two Canadians landed there some time ago, so now you can't <laughs> land small planes there. So. so we landed 40 miles away from Minot, and at roughly 1 a.m. on May 2nd, we arrived at Trinity Hospital and walked into Mitchell's intensive care unit, and this is what my, my bride Kathy and I of 32 years and I saw. The dry eraser board on the wall was contained lists and lists of items that were broken. My first thought was that they pushed us to get here so that they could harvest his organs. I turned around, <coughs> excuse me. I turned around and walked out. These first moments at the hospital were the scariest of my life. As I re-entered the ICU, I remembered, I asked the nurse, did his wallet come with him? Yes, she said. We searched for his driver's license, and there it was. He had checked donor. And this spoke volumes as to the kind of person he truly is. Mitchell, Mitch, and if you caught the article, his friends call him Smiley, <laughs> has worked hard with his help from some great people here at Kirch Kenny, and he is better, a better young man today because of it. Here to tell you how he interacts with the staff, I'd like to introduce my son, Mitchell. Yes, my accident almost killed me, but I'm so grateful today. I want, during my five months of recovery at Regions Hospital, I was working with Lisa Ray, an occupational therapist. She works at Regions on the weekends and at the Courage Kenny in Sale still water. Um, if you haven't met her, you are missing out. <laughs> um, she told me about this wonderful facility that has helped people like me and over 3,500 people each year. Um, when I came here, I was in a wheelchair and had speaking issues. Um, like the most of us that have a brain injury, I didn't want or need any help at first. It took me a while to get used to coming to the Courage Kenny. Um, <laughs> um, I, at first I was seeing Peggy for speech therapy, Katie for physical therapy, and of course, Lisa Ray, who continued to believe in me and pushed me harder and farther. When I started in using the pool, I was in a wheelchair, and I loved to be able to use the pool. Um, the pool is heated like a bathtub which it makes it pleasant to work out in. Um, I had a breakthrough being able to walk for distances on my own with a cane at first, then on my own without a cane, and different surfaces like up and down hills. Peggy, if it wasn't for you, 
I would have not been able to public speak. We, um, in high school and college, I hated to go and speak. We had something in common. We both have brain injuries and found brilliant, successful way to compensate. I'm planning to public speak for my career. My goal is to be a motivational speaker. Um, I'm so <laughs> I'm still coming here today for the FES bike, and I'd like to thank Holly. My goal is to eventually use my right hand like I used to. Um, and I still go into the pool today, which helps me walk more normal. Um, and sometimes my niece, Amara, joins me. Um, my godchild, Amara, joins me. Um, she's a hit with everyone. <laughs> if you go on Wednesday mornings, but, but if you don't, you can see her right now. <laughs> Every staff member is <laughs> very friendly and helpful. Um, they are caring to everyone. Um, I currently volunteer at the Roseville Library, um, restacking all of those books, and I work at Armitage Accounting. I had a legislative idea, so I um, took, I contacted my House of Representative, Randy Jessup, and my senator. Isaac, Jason Isaacson, which is working on a legislative bill that allows a confidential list of emergency contacts. Once you get a new license, you can add up to three emergency contacts. Like, if there was a If there was a, already a emergency contacts, when my accident happened, my parents would have been called. Um, when my um, auto accident help happened, <laughs> um, in the database. Um, not 10 hours later. I'd like to thank all the um, Courage Center, or Courage Kenny, um, <laughs> who played a huge role in my recovery. And I'd like to thank all the people in the room for their generosity. I, on the first day, I was in a wheelchair, and today I walk out. Hold on. <laughs> um, this is why Courage Kenny had, has made me a better human being. Thank you. Thank you.